Hello and welcome to this joint interview, France 24 RFI. Our guest today is the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. Mr. President, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure. With me for this interview, Christophe Boisbouvier from RFI. And Marc Perelman of France 24. Mr. President, uh, if you go back a year ago, could you have imagined that a Rwandan, your foreign minister, would become the head of the Francophonie? In Rwanda, we have become used to things happening that we did not expect, or others did not expect. It has uh, been a history for us that uh, has put the country in this sort of uh, circumstance and uh, environment where so many things happen, even those that have not been planned, are not expected, they happen. So it's no surprise to me. But what, were you surprised when in voice of Mr. President Macron came to you suggesting Louise Mushiki Wabo should become the new General Secretary of the Francophonie. Can you tell us more about that? No, not surprises uh, to be put in many categories. I think France itself was surprised that they had Macron as the, their president. Because it's not too long before that that France had elections and uh, there was no predetermined person who would become uh, the president of France. So if you look at the whole range of things, uh, things happen, they are new things, they are different, and this is why I was saying in my country, we've got used to this kind of thing. So uh, I, I think President Macron has brought some freshness in the politics, uh, not only in France, but in France, Africa, then France, the rest of the world. And we are seeing new things shaping up across the, the world. So it's inevitable that some of these things would happen. But uh, can you confirm that he, he did send envoys to you suggesting that idea and that you thought it was a good idea? And then you suggested that Luis Mushiki Wabo. Well, why don't you ask him? <laughs> I'm asking you, because no, he came to see you. No, but you met him before me, so you should have asked him that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the predecessor of Luis Mushiki Wabo, Mikhail Jean, clearly uh, criticized the way she was pushed out. She said it was a deal uh, between countries. She also criticized uh, the fact that uh, the organization would be now uh, headed by someone who doesn't respect the values and principle clearly alluding to Rwanda's human rights record. What is your reaction to that? It is a simple reaction. One is for Mikhail Jha to just recall how she became the Secretary General of the Francophone. She will know that she was a product of some controversy that took place. So for her of to African be- African disunity. Yes, and, and between Africa and other parts of Francophone, inclu including actually France. So to be this person judging now the whole of Francophone, because if you look at the amount of the consensus that was generated first by Africa, second by the whole of Francophone. It can't be that there was something wrong hidden behind it. Otherwise, all these countries could not have just acquiesced and accepted anything put down their throat. In fact, for her to say that is, is, is just an insult to the wisdom of so many people and so many countries in the Francophone. So, but I can understand she took it personally. When it becomes personal, then somebody angry, or, because you could see in her speech, she was very angry, she was bitter, she was, I, 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 you were shocked? I can understand. You were shocked? Not, not really. I, I, 
I'm not shocked by some behaviors of some people. I have seen this so many times. So we just mm -hmm. put it in its own place. One month ago, Rwanda freed over 2,000 prisoners. Was it a sign of goodwill from Rwanda before this summit? Actually, there were 2,000, so not even 1,000. But, but so many times in history, after 1994, we've released so many people so many times at different times. It's just an occurrence that happens and it has its own calendar. There's a time we raised 30,000 people. Yes, There's but another among, time we raised so. Of course, but among these prisoners, there was a victoire in Gabire. But there are many personalities among those that we have always released. Yes. So Victor Ngabiri is one of those who were in prison for the same reasons as those who were there. Most of them, among them, there were those who had uh, crimes related to the genocide of different categories of the 2000. So she was among those. So but this is a sign of goodwill before this summit? It's a sign of uh, goodwill in the politics of the country. It has gone on for nearly the last uh, 25 years. But uh, the French president, you mentioned uh, an interview he gave to us, he said uh, that he did see signs, and he was clearly referring to that move, that Rwanda was willing uh, maybe to improve its uh, human rights situation, and that the fact that Luis Mushiki Wabo was now at the helm of the Francophonie, in a way, uh, would probably help that in the future. Do you share that assessment? Yeah, but the, the release came way after Mushikiwabo had been suggested as a candidate, much, much later. So, But before it, her designation it, it, here. But, but he, the, pre, the president could not have seen that these people are going to be released months and the year before that happened. So I don't, why, why do you think it is only one thing that people should look at? Maybe there is a record of Rwanda in its own governance system. And the job Mushichiwa had done for over eight years as a foreign minister. I am the chair of the African Union, and she has been, therefore, the chair of the Council of Ministers of Africa. So I surely think this must be coming out of uh, some credit others give to the country or to the people in the country, which may be people who ask these questions are not ready to, to, to see. Are you hoping to see a French ambassador in Rwanda? Are you hoping to see Mr. President Emmanuel Macron in Kigali for the 25th commemoration of the genocide next April? I'm hoping to see good progress in the relationship between uh, Rwanda and France. Leaders, people in the diplomacy, a lot of uh, progress. And that will bring in so many things uh, to happen, uh, including uh, strengthening of uh, diplomatic ties that have been there in history and getting better as we go into the future. It will definitely happen because I think new times bring new things. We are in a time where if it was two years ago, I we would be dealing with uh, different people. Now we are dealing with uh, President Macron, I think, who has an open mind to things. Maybe that's even why he was elected in France, because the French maybe so he represented something new or different. So uh, I, I think we can make uh, uh, good progress forward. But, uh, did you, for instance, hand out an invitation to visit Rwanda? We remember when Nicolas Sarkozy went to Rwanda. Yeah. Would it be an important gesture? Because symbols do count. Absolutely. Inviting him, we have done uh, way before I remember the f when he had just come to office, actually weeks into that, 
Uh, we've been meeting in different places, right. and uh, I've always extended an invitation to the president to visit the country. I'm sure as we work out a good relationship, the president would be served well by seeing and hearing things uh, firsthand. Uh, just uh, quickly, uh, one regional issue in uh, neighboring DRC. Yes. Elections are scheduled in late December. Mm -hmm. It's been a complicated uh, story. President Joseph Kabila said he would uh, not run, but many observers in the region, outside the region, are fearing that there will be unrest uh, before the election, during the elections, and after. Obviously, Rwanda is sitting on the front row. Are you concerned? about such unrest around this very tense election? Not so much concerned uh, as in the sense of worried about what is going to happen, but in as far as Rwanda has a responsibility to contribute to what happens that is expected by the Congolese or by the other Africans including Rwandans themselves as very close neighbors with a history that when things happen in Rwanda, they spill over to DRC. When they happen in DRC, they spill over to Rwanda. There's no question. And I'm sure other neighboring countries are, are, are probably looking at that with anticipation, and maybe they want to be helpful. But why I particularly say the Rwanda, again, is because of the role Rwanda is playing as the chair of the African Union. We are always seized with what is going on, not only in DRC, but in other places across Africa. And we want primarily the responsibility of dealing with any such problems uh, lies with the, the country itself and, and the leaders. Whether you appreciate them or not, that's the primary responsibility uh, is with them. Uh, and then the others, we can play a supportive role. We can uh, you know, raise questions that we think people should be addressing. And this has been going on for quite some time between the DRC, the African Union, the UN, different partners, inclu including Europe. Uh, they have been raising a lot of uh, Questions with the DRC. Um, with uh, Mrs. Mushiki Wabo at the head of Francophonie, are you planning now to take steps to promote the French language in Rwanda? Yeah, let me first uh, clear one confusion which I have heard or even read in some papers. People have been talking about one is a confusion that. Rwanda was not even a member of Francophonie. I don't know where this came from. Two, that we replaced uh, French with English. I, I want to make uh, those two corrections. One, Rwanda has three languages it recognizes officially. Three. One is the, the Rwandan language, the Kenya Rwanda, which is our vernacular. The other is French. The other is English. So we actually added it. We added English to the languages we are speaking originally, which were two. And for very obvious reasons. There is nothing sinister or mischievous about that. It's just because Rwanda happens to be in the middle of an East African region that entirely speaks English. And we do transactions with this region beyond 90% of what we do. So I mean, one would be, I think, just foolish to say you would ignore that kind of thing. But for us, we move there. So Mushichiwabo being a Secretary General of Francophonie is maybe going to take our involvement, our French speaking, or the other things that were being talked about in terms of values, uh, continuing in the same direction and making further steps and things getting better, there is no question about it. Uh, Mr. President, uh, during this summit, we were told uh, you were speaking French with your friend's uh, chief of state. Uh, is it true? Est-ce que c'est vrai? Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire quelques mots en français? I tried. I tried uh, my, my French. At least uh, 
I can read it loud when it is reading. Speaking uh, freely as one would speak the language they understand is still difficult for me uh, to speak in French. But just if the, the, this is of any consolation to anyone, uh, in my family, uh, my wife, my four children, I'm the only one who doesn't speak French. The rest do. My wife, my children have studied it at school. And so for me, I'm still struggling. But maybe things will improve. Who knows? Merci beaucoup. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President, for accepting our invitation for France 24 and Radio France International. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for watching.